Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start recording, or somebody has, so thank you. Um, Georg. So this is the our weekly call, January 21st, 2020. Um, on the agenda today, I think just I had a few things um, that I put down. Um, the first was the status of the metrics release. I'd kind of like to just get an update because the hope is is that by the end of the week we're done with these things so that Kevin can um, kind of do the work that he needs to do. Is that right, Kevin? Sorry? Then we need to wrap up the comments on the metrics and get them stabilized by the end of the week so that you can do Yes, the, the, the plan is to, to go uh, live with the metrics on the website on the 24th. Okay. Um, which is soon. Or I should say, I think the, the 24th is the day, yeah. the deadline. So we probably go live on the 25th, to be honest. Okay. So. Um, so if you take a look, I just, if, if we could just kind of get some updates now. Um, on, I'll start with DNI. Did I freeze? Did I freeze? Okay. Um, I'll start with DNI. So yesterday in the DNI meeting, we went through all of the metrics. Um, I'm currently um, issuing pull requests based on the conversations we had. I do think there were no showstoppers on the DNI side of things. They were mostly just editorial issues. Um, somebody can tell me otherwise, but I think DNI is is should be done. I'll have these done right after this meeting. Um, editorial issues. Um, can Common, Don, have you gotten what you need on the Common side of things? No, I have not. I was just looking at that. And so what I'm doing right now is um, assigning a few people that I asked questions of okay. in the um, uh, in the comments. So there are a couple of issues that um, there were broken links and things or missing links to resources where I would say this was included in Grimoire Lab, but um, no link to where it was included, uh, similar with, uh, with Augur. Augur. So, um, so on yeah. Those, on those, let me just say it provided in one of the software. We have been going back and forth about providing a deep link directly to where we have an example versus just linking to the home page of the software okay. and letting people figure it out. So maybe we just do the latter, just link to the home page. Yeah, I can do that. Some of them were uh, in the common ones. Some of them were deep links and some of them just weren't linked at all. So I would say, just let me know what link you want me to use uh, for that resource. Um, and if it's linked to the homepage, that's, that's fine. I can do, I can do that. Okay. There were just a couple of those. So I'll, I'll do that now. I'll just make okay. some, I'll assign people. Okay. That way you can find the issues. Uh, thank you. Value. Here, anybody? In the value call, we didn't have any showstoppers. The okay. only thing that I still need to do is write the release notes, but we addressed all of the comments. Okay. Um, so Georg, are the, could you take a look real quickly? Are the comments, are they merged? Are they done? The value group has no open pull requests. Everything is marked. Okay, so that's a good to go, except for the release note comment. Yes. Okay. Okay, so I turned it bold. Um, risk. Risk. I think we're ready to. We have a few pull requests and um, issues to address, but nothing that's a showstopper. Okay. 
Um, do you have a timeline on those? And I expect to have them all taken care of today. Okay. I agree. I, I don't think any of them were, a lot of them were editorial things. Yeah. So, okay. Um, and then evolution is Carter on? Um, he's not, I know that he had worked through in the call last week. Okay. Um, a bunch of little issues and pull requests that were accepted. So I think, I think evolution's in pretty good shape. There were, there was some language discussions and comments made about how to just, you know, what the definition of contributor is, but I think that it's clarified and consistent between evolution and the other working groups that use that okay. language now. And so I don't think there's anything materially concerning, I guess you would say. Okay. Um, let me take a look over there real fast. Okay. So there are there are a series of pull requests. Yeah. There's and I think those not. are, Carter did everything as a pull request for the small edits, and I think okay. someone needs to go in and accept them, and I can do that. I think I said I would, so. Okay, Tom has a, it looks like Tom has a series of pull requests that don't pass the DCO. We did ask Tom to make some changes to his pull requests. Okay. Um, I haven't looked to see if those changes were made. If they didn't pass the DCO, I will go and check with Tom on that. Okay, can you My guess is he made the edits directly on the GitHub site and the DCO didn't happen there. Okay. So I'll, I'll work with Carter to get that taken care of. Okay. Thanks. Sure. Okay. Okay. Um, and then the, it looks like the release notes are going to come at the end. Um, Kevin, it, it may end up starting to be easier. So as part of the release notes, I think we're going to say a few things. One is that there's a new template that all the working groups worked off of. And then the release notes will also identify the new metrics. They were part of this release and Kevin, I think you and I can just kind of sit down in five minutes and figure that out. Yes. Yeah, just to look up what the new metrics are. Were there any other things that we were hoping to say in the release notes? Uh, we do want to include the, uh, the PDF of the prior release. Okay. I think that's where we're going to store the, the release notes is where we're going to store those, those previous releases going okay. forward. And we have that anyway, don't we? Yeah. I mean, we have the PDF anyway. Okay. Um, does anybody else remember anything from the release notes conversation? So I'm looking at the section in our meeting minutes from yeah. December 10. Okay. We wanted to list the ones that are new. Can do. We wanted to highlight any major changes to metrics. Okay. We wanted to mention restructuring of focus areas where they occurred. Oh, right, with common, okay. Common and evolution. Okay. And then when we moved or renamed metrics, and just mentioned that we have a new template. Okay. Okay. So if I take a look at See if I take a look at evolution on that issue, the release notes. I'll ping Carter. Okay. Uh, real quick, Georg, how yeah. are the uh... I believe you you populated the uh, the chaos contributors list in the last release. How yeah, did, I did. How did you populate that? And uh, 
how should we update that? Excellent question. I had looked at the contributors to the different working groups and on the mailing list, and I used our dashboard um, to get a list of contributors. So I don't have a good process for figuring out which names we need to add at this point. I know Saleh, who is here right now, he just joined. He's someone who joined up since the last release, but I don't know anyone else. What was the question? I'm sorry, I was typing something. Uh, in an, at the, uh, at the bottom of our oh. at the bottom of our release page, we have uh, chaos contributors. Yep. Okay, I get it. List. So the, the individuals that have contributed to defining these metrics. Uh, I was asking Georg how uh, how he populated it for the last release and how we can update it to make sure that everyone is included uh, in the new release. I mean, my take is we leave everybody on there that was as part of the last release. So it's just identifying those new people, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Although, yeah. A quick question. Um, is everybody who contributing uh, to um, commits on the commits? Because we could actually just um, use the uh, JSON API to get the commits and pull up the names of the, you know, of, of everyone mentioned on a PR. Um, I guess I know for sure some of the PRs I did didn't have everybody else. Uh, but I, I wonder if that's a route we want to explore for the future. So I think it also includes people that have made comments on issues, uh, people from the mailing list. People uh, who have done work in documents. Uh, yeah. So there's there's a bunch of stuff that's not in the GitHub API, people who interact with the project in, in other ways. And so this was, list was kind of designed to make sure that that would give visibility, not just to the people who end up doing the pull request, but to all of the people who've contributed in the many different ways. Maybe I'll, um, I think I'll take on this task of trying to identify who those people are. I'm in a lot of these meetings and I don't know, maybe have a pretty good picture of who's, who's participating um, and then holding that against the light of the current list. We do have a note at the bottom of the list that says if you, if you feel like you should be on this list, please reach out to us and we will yeah. add you. And maybe we, maybe we make that call on the email list as well, just in case we yeah, that's totally miss fair. anyone. Yep, here's the list that I have at the moment. If you feel like you need to be on, or you should be on here. Just My, I, I like the idea. A concern is that people don't feel entitled to be on that list when they should be there. Like I said, I'll do, I'll really do my best to yeah. identify those people. <laughs> and then still, if somebody does want to speak up, if like I've just made a huge mistake, okay, I don't include you, Georg, you know, then I Some know where your house would, lives. But yeah, you would, <laughs> yeah, something tells me you would speak up. So, all right. I mean, I assume uh, even after the, the release happens, somebody expresses a concern, we can always edit it, right? So I oh. think we can add that comment. If we somehow missed you, please let, this is Matt's address. Like, this is where you throw your garbage <laughs> in front of my lawn. Yeah, nobody, uh, <laughs> only a few people in Omaha around here, so. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm far away from everybody else. So <laughs> it almost feels like we want to keep one place where every time somebody interacts with someone, um, you know, unfamiliar to the project about the project, they would just write the email, write the handle, write whatever it was uh, there. Uh, and then this way, um, I guess the part where people don't necessarily know whether or not they should be on the list. Um, it, it's actually very, um, very true. Um, you know, when people feel that they were forgotten, um, that is that is more, um, you know, that is more 
tangible to them than reasoning about whether or not they should be on the list. Um, so yeah, um, preemptive, I guess, in the future is- I can do that, yep. So that's, that we don't, yep, that's fair. One of, the, one of the things I thought about last time was also to have a little bit of a threshold. So not everyone who showed up on the mailing list, I added to the list of contributors because some people just said hi or hey, this is me and they didn't contribute to the conversation. So I held it up a little bit to the light to see who actually was talking about metrics. But it's very imprecise. It's in good faith, I think is. So Georg, what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll put together the list just and I'll bold the people that I add. And if you want to just give it a second look. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll too, but this will <laughs> give me peace of mind that somebody else is taking a look at it. Um, okay, I'm, I'm actually going to jump down to kind of the one of the last things on this list here. Wait, I'm sorry, is there anything else from the release or the release? I guess just a final call to folks that are involved in their working groups to just kind of remember this is the last week. Um, so are, for the for ChaosCon, are we going to record ChaosCon? We've done it in the past. I have a nice camera. I mean, it's something we can do. I think it's a helpful thing to do. Um, I know we did it last year, and I don't think there were any objections. Um, I mean, I'd reach out to the speakers, of course, and just ask. Should we prepare any specific uh, piece of paper where we ask for the, you know, have these under a free license, blah, blah, blah and YouTube, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. so, yes. Yeah, like a speaker release form. Okay, I can do that. You are, Tom, you are much more concise, uh, specific than me. <laughs> one of, yeah. the, one ahead, of the things that we ran into in the past is that speakers weren't sure if their company would allow it or not. And so if we could send this out ahead of time so they can get permission from their communications department, that would be great. I'll do it this week. Yeah. Last time we got the consent on the email, uh, except one or two, we got the consent from everybody. Okay. Yeah, maybe in the future I was going to Ask like maybe we should add this uh, in the in the form when they submit CFPs. Like I don't know if you all agree that that's a good idea or not. Okay. So we sort of get that out of the way, and then I mean if then somebody doesn't want to be recorded, that's fine. But we'll know ahead of time. But... We may need to add a a disclaimer on the website as well. Yeah. To, if okay. you don't want to be recorded, reach out to uh, we'll say Georg. Reach out to Georg. I like that. I like sure. the <laughs> of including it in the submission process. Yeah, I really like including it on the, the CFP form. I mean, yeah. we include other things like you have to, you know, the checkbox to adhere to the code of conduct. I don't see why we wouldn't include a sure. video release. All this. Okay. It's good right. to do that, but we should also know that consent is continuous. It's like something that at any moment somebody can say, okay, yes, move, remove me or add me up. So it should. Yeah. Yeah, I, if we included it in the submission process, I I would be very happy to remind people when they're at yeah. Yeah. Don't forget, mm -hmm. we're planning on recording if you have any hesitation okay. with that. And I mean, we always share the video before we post anything anyway. So people always do have an opportunity to opt mm -hmm. out several, yeah, several times along the way. Yeah. Uh, did, we, did we get a community photo at uh, ChaosCon North America this year? No. Okay, and I know we, we didn't get one at a, a Europe uh, previously either, but that is something we used to do. Do we still yeah. want to do that? Of course. Yes, yes we, we just keep forgetting. Right. <laughs> so, so here's how you don't forget. Um, what we should do is we should put a five minute slot somewhere like at the very, like the last five minutes after lunch yeah. or the five minutes before lunch. And if we just put it on the agenda, then we'll remember to actually do it. 
time for I'll and, add that agenda item right now. <laughs> and everybody will know if they want to be in the picture that they should That's be right. in the room then. And if they don't, they can go get a copy or something. Perfect. All right. Um, good. Okay, so recording generally asked, do we have to do anything recording audience wise? I recall we've done this in the past. Uh, we made a, we, the, I think uh, at, in Europe, uh, Ray made an announcement uh, last year. Okay. Uh, basically said, if you don't want to be uh, filmed, I think let us know. Okay. I know that sometimes they do those stickers, like if you have a like a you know, lime green sticker on your name tag, that means I don't want to be recorded. So if you're in a picture or in a video and you see the lime green sticker, you can't do anything with it. Or give out some helmets for people who don't want to be on video, right? <laughs> <laughs> so. But I but I always wear plaid, so you'll know. <laughs> You'll know me. <laughs> we going to yeah. have name tags? What's that? Are we going to have name tags? Yeah, I'm going to bring them. I'm just going to bring those sticky, sticky name tags and some Sharpies. I'll grab them out of the office here. And then perhaps we can just get some stickers too. And okay. All right. Um, helpful. The concern, the yeah. concern with that is stickers on name tags are not as visible all the time. So especially when you get people from the side or from behind. Sure. A more visible way that I've seen it done, which we won't do this time, but is to have lanyards because they show around and then the band having different colors. Okay. Um, all right. Cool. Um, anything else on, on ChaosCon and ChaosCon recording? Okay. On ChaosCon, we need to adjust the schedule because lunch will be served at 12.30 at the earliest. And we currently have lunch scheduled at noon. So we need to move one slot up. And then I'll ask, add the photo there as well. You can always move me. Yeah, I was just going to ask if there's an easy one, if one of us was in the afternoon that we could just move. I'm in the afternoon. Well, I, I was thinking of moving the first one after lunch to before lunch. Who is it? Uh, right now, the slot is empty. Um, it's one of the ones that we promoted from Lightning Talks. I have to look that up again. Okay, okay then yes, because one of the things that... So the schedule was sort of designed so that we would have an after lunch keynote to get people back after lunch. And so if we've moved talks into that slot that are, hmm. Let's take a look at this. I, I'm concerned about us promoting, promoting new talks into that slot as opposed to putting what we think are gonna be this, one of the stronger talks in that slot. We could move Brian Prophet's talk right after lunch because we wanted to sort of end on a high note and I think we placed Brian at the end of the day. Yeah, um, yeah, but that, he was placed at the end to keep people there too. Yeah, so I know. His was but, also yeah. deliberate. Um, we could move Tom Men's to the uh, the thirteen twenty slot. Do we think that's going to be a nice lively talk after lunch? I've not seen him speak. I'm sure it will be. He's got an interesting perspective. Also, they are one of the sponsors. <laughs> that doesn't make people more interested in it. <laughs> True. That does but... not influence content. No, let's just be clear. Sponsorship does not influence content. The two things are different. Yeah. Just to keep us from getting in a pickle later. <laughs> Thanks, Don. That was much more diplomatic. <laughs> but if people think that talk is going to be interesting and is going to be a draw for after lunch, then we should put it in the after lunch slot. We just need to double check with people that they make, make sure they're okay with us moving stuff but, around. But why, if we moved his, that's a, he's a morning talk. Isn't that not what we're trying to oh, do? That's 
No, you're right. I don't know. I need to look at the schedule. I put it in the chat. So it's Brian and me, Ray, Yo, Johan, Matt Broberg, and Isabella. Oh, I'm the one right before lunch. So the problem is moving someone else before lunch or after lunch. It is adding someone after you before we start. Lunch. Okay. How about just having a very, very long break and then lunch and then, you know, end up an hour later with everyone else? You guys can use some, you know, um, would that work, like, schedule-wise? No, because there's the Fosda and Beer event, so we can't extend it past. But yeah. what having a longer... Yeah, like, like I'm not sure if, um, if having, you know, just a full day um, you know, having time for people to kind of regroup before they continue in the interactions could, could be, um, could allow, a, a, you know, a few of the attendees to do in more sessions. Especially in yeah, but we already have an hour and a half for lunch and we don't have, we don't have extra time in the schedule. This isn't a problem of extra time in the schedule. The problem is that lunch is at the wrong time. Yeah. Because we've booked the whole, the whole day is booked. It's just that one of the talks isn't on the schedule yet. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, how, how about uh, I'll create a pull request and you review it, and then if you think you want to make changes to my suggestion, then we'll discuss it on the pull request. Sure. I mean, I'll, I'll give you my input, but yes, you can do that too. Well, I guess if I look at the the, so I look at Ray and Brian's talk. Mm -hmm. I think. A lot of people will care about your talk, Ray, giving insight from GitLab. I'm not sure if I'll be a draw to come back from lunch. I won't I wouldn't come back from lunch, but you're very modest. <laughs> yeah. I was actually looking at that one as being a, a strong one that we could put right after lunch. Yeah. So or, I, I mean, topic-wise, yeah. I mean, topic-wise, diversity and inclusion is always a good one uh, that people are interested in. So, and I know you're a presenter, Matt. So, oh, both Matts. But. Mine should generate a. Mine is conversation. It it should be conversation based, right? So it's. Yeah. I talked a little bit about this on Monday in the DNI group, but that's kind of like what the talk's going to look like. You know, here's where we're at. Here's what we're trying to accomplish. You know what? I think I'm just making this more complicated than it needs to be. Can we, can we just move? So the talk that's right after lunch, the one at 1.20, is the talk that's not on the schedule yet. So that's the one we promoted. Can we just, let's just move that to before lunch. Does that solve our problem? And then yeah. we'd start after lunch with um, Enrique's talk, which would be fine. Yeah. So it's basically just flip lunch in that empty slot. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm making this more complicated than it needs to be. We don't need to rearrange the whole schedule the week before. Or two weeks before. Yeah, the talk is from Ca Camille from Eno3. Uh, and she has a co-presenter. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I... I moved it and they will start at 11.40. And then we can have the conference group photo at noon. And then lunch starts at 12.30, giving us one hour 10 before everyone needs to be back. So lunch goes from 12.30 to 1.30 and then 10 minutes later is when we start. Does that work for everyone? Yeah. I mean, lunch is on site, so. So there'll be a half an hour before lunch? We, we, we have the group photo and yeah. one half an hour to complete the group photo and then start having lunch right now. Yeah. 
My... It gives us some wiggle room if we run longer. That's true. But what we don't want is 70 people hovering while they're trying to finish setting up the food, which is what can happen if you release people too early. Yeah. So the other option is we move two talks up. We move Manrique up as well. But then we only have one talk and lightning talks if we don't move the second break down. So we can move Manrique's talk up and then move the break down and the lightning talks down. Yeah, it would have another break between, so something between 3.20 and 5.20, which is two hours and a half almost. So something like having another break in between would be good. Since the end of the day, people might be tired. So like after Yo Yehudi? So I, I would do like, like perhaps moving Matt and Isabella. Uh, so the break would be perhaps after Matt, Robert. I'm sharing my screen so you'll see the changes that I'm oh, yeah. making. So then we can move another talk or another couple of talks just before lunch. So if we, if we do this, we move the Camille talk and Manrique's talk up. Then we have the mm -hmm. photo at 20 after and then lunch starts 10 minutes later which I think is good. Everyone can go to the restroom and so on. Mm -hmm. And then we start again one and a half hours later. Um, but then we only have one talk and lightning's talk. So I was thinking of moving two talks up here. Yeah. Does that sound okay? Oops. So moving these up here. And then I need to adjust the timings. Yeah, I think that I think that looks good. That also solves the problem of having too long mm -hmm. of a without a break in the afternoon. Breaks mm -hmm. it up a little bit. There. Now everything should align again. Mm -hmm. time-wise. And then I'll just send out an email to um, everyone who is registered to let them know, hey, sorry, we had to change the schedule a little bit. Um, just a heads up, if you're planning to see certain talks that times might have changed. And then I can include the disclaimer about the video recording. Um, in that email, mm -hmm. and then we should be good. Works for me. Yeah, this looks good. Thank you, Garrick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, website is updated. Thanks, Garrick. You're welcome. The Camille talk is not coming through on the markdown. Can someone take a look why that is? It was in the, in here. Oh, because there are two. Okay, I'll fix that. Okay, anyway, okay. I'll stop sharing my screen. Uh, all right, thanks. One of the concerns I have for Chaos Con is that we are full. <laughs> we sold uh, 12 tickets more than our maximum capacity. And there are several people who I personally know I've told, hey, you can stop by. If there are free seats, you can join us. So just a heads up, we might be over full. And <laughs> if the if the hotel asks us to, um, to, to make a uh, room or kick out people, then 
I'm thinking to just say, hey, anyone who has a ticket, you have preference to stay. Everyone who doesn't, if we need the space, then you might have to leave. But I, anyway, that, it's just a concern on my head. Maybe you have a different view. I think no, we're I mean, usually we're usually okay. I mean, there are enough people that their travel plans change, their flight got delayed, they you know, I there's usually a good enough no show rate that I think we should be okay. But if it does come to that, I agree that we can we can probably just make an announcement and be like anybody that didn't actually have a ticket is gonna have to leave or the, the hotel's going to, I don't know, hurt us. Put us down. Yeah. I mean, how many people actually paid Gary do you know like I have 68 who paid oh really wow it's mm -hmm. I mean it's usually people who haven't paid that don't show up sometimes um, but I mean I agree with Don there's usually a drop off I would assume like I'm guessing like there might I would it wouldn't surprise me if we see 10 or 15 people that don't show up um, so I think we'll be okay like I mean a few of us can leave the room for a few hours and and go back in when the hotel staff not watching. But. And then, uh, if, if you remember, there's there's space out of the meeting room, so there are some big yeah. tables. Stay right, there. Right. Yeah, kind of stay there. that's what I was thinking. Like, so we are now like an airline. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just want <laughs> yeah. to make sure you all are aware of the situation, and we'll deal with it when the time comes. Yeah. Thanks. And then I have on here, Matt, you already said you're bringing the um, name tags, which is excellent. Yeah, and I'll bring the name tag. I'll over Ray, there and, yeah, Ray and Don, you two had volunteered to collect slides from speakers ahead of time. Yep. Or, excellent. I mean, in your email, Georg, do you want to just tell them to send like me and Don their slides? like? within the next week or so? Or the do you email want me to I'm just reach out to them se separately? The email I'm sending is to all participants. Oh, OK. So I would yeah. not include it there. Right. So then in that case, before you send that email, let me draft that speaker release form for recording, because you could just include that too in the text. Yeah, so we should send out an email with a speaker release form and the request for slides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll do that speaker release from probably by tomorrow. And I'll send it. Okay, to both cool. Of you. Yeah, and then we can we okay. can send it out afterwards. Okay, cool. shout to all the speakers. Great. Do we want to send it out via DocuSign so we can just simplify the signing process for the release? For the release form. I've never used it. Is it easy enough? It is. Um, here at Patricia, we have a license that I can use. Okay. Or, I mean, are we actually asking people to sign something or is it just a checkbox? I mean, I'm, I'm okay. definitely okay with DocuSign, but yeah. It's just a checkbox. Yeah, it seems a little, yeah. it seems a little heavy. Yeah. In the past, we just said, uh, respond to this email, but yes, basically. I think if we yeah. include the text that says, hey, we're going to record you, please respond and confirm that this is okay. I think we should probably be yeah. okay. Okay. Is, so is that all we have to say? There's no like speaker release form? <laughs> is it just a sentence? Yeah. For or, asking yeah, people? or yeah, recording or photos. Like if I'll draw I'll type something yeah. up based on what we were all just saying that you can just include it in that email. Like I won't write an official form. Okay. Um, all right. Um, the other thing is, uh, with uh, is there anything else on ChaosCon? One of the on one of the things we have talked about in the past is to bring additional snacks. Um, we we do have coffee and some snacks from the hotel, but if you want to bring in chocolate or anything else, we can still do that. Okay. I don't know if who wanted to do that or if you wanted to do that. Um, what we've done other previous years was to bring kilos and kilos of mandarins. Kilos and kilos of what? Mandarins, these small oh, oranges. Okay. Yeah. So sweet, fruit, it works. And they are from Spain, so <laughs> I give them up. 
market are you bringing them? Oh, no, 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 but in the supermarket. <laughs> so basically, most of the fruit going around Europe are coming from Spain, so that's why. I see. I gotcha. All right. Okay. Everything else, I think we are good. Okay, and okay, you, good. you have you've handled the lunch, Georg? Yes, I paid for lunch and I paid for the coffee break. So coffee and okay. tea is available throughout the entire day. Mm -hmm. Have you put that reimbursement into Expensify? Not yet. It was only processed yesterday and I haven't gotten around to it yet. Okay. If you ping me, as soon as you do it, if you ping me, I think I see it, but if you ping me, then I can go ahead and approve it. Right okay. I will. Thank you. And I don't oh. remember, did the registration have like special dietary requirements? And if so, is the hotel able to handle that? I have, vegan. Not, I have not checked, but it's a buffet-style um, lunch. So I will go through the registrations, tease out all of the, red, uh, the requirements, and send it to the hotel again to confirm. Okay. Yeah, that would be good. Because typically stuff on the buffet is not going to be vegan. It's not going to be gluten-free. Yeah, I'll just send a request to please label the food for these groups because people... Can you can you ask them how they're going to handle the special dietary requirements? And Okay. Um, maybe we can send that out in the participant email. Okay. I will... So, so here's, here's the issue. Like I've been to loads of conferences and my option is like a vegetable and that's it. So like green beans for lunch because they've labeled the vegan option and that's what it is. Um, and so if that's what's going to happen, I just want to know ahead of time because I'll bring my own lunch. Like I'm happy to not eat. Okay, there, I will, send, so that I will look at the registrations right now and send that over to the hotel. Yeah, okay. Uh, one other quick question. We may have talked about this in the past. Like when do you need like volunteers to show up that morning for the conference? Is it like 8.30 or I don't know how soon they can let us into the room. Uh, typically at Davies is like, uh, yeah, half an hour in advance is more than enough because they will. Mm -hmm. So uh, the plan probably is to go the day before, say we are here, everything is in place. So they let us check the room, everything is working. Um, and then they have uh, already the, the full room because these are two rooms. Um, so the day, the, the same day, the very same day, like staying there like 20 minutes in advance, it's probably more than enough. So my suggestion would be that one. We go the day before, we test everything works, everything works. So then the, ne the next day, we just need to be there, right? 15, okay. 20 minutes in advance, everything is in place. It works. So we should probably be there if registration and networking starts at nine and we only have half an hour for it, then we should probably, I would, I would say we probably should be there at 8.30 yeah, just enough. to be safe. I was just looking at our schedule and we only have 10 minutes for the morning break. Something got messed up. We should have like 20 or 30, I guess. Around 20, 25 minutes for morning Yeah, it should probably be 20. Hmm. Coffee machines are in any case in the very same place where I think people can go and I don't know how noisy they are. So maybe people cannot take coffee. Pierre, you had said that lunch was an hour and 10. Is that right? Hour and 30. Hour and 30. I mean, to me, because we have lunch on site, that's a pretty decent amount of time. I know that yeah. people want to talk and all that kind of stuff, but there's no walking. There's no re really reassembling a lot of people. <laughs> so perhaps that 10 minutes for the break could be found there. Okay, um, well, I had other things. Um, in terms of the meeting schedule, 
for just for the chaos meetings. Obviously, the next couple weeks are going to be a little bit um, <laughs> just a little problematic. So, um, should we meet next week on Tuesday for this call? Wednesday is when I'm. I think num at least I'm heading out on Wednesday. So towards the end of the week are not going to really. They might have lower attendance. So should and I know that like Grimoire Lab is just going to pick up after FOSDEM. That was the decision in the prior call. Mm -hmm. Should we make an announcement on these? I always feel bad when people show up and there's nobody there, you know, or there's no agenda. I'd rather just be a little bit more proactive and say, we'll just see after FOSDEM, see after ChaosCon. Any thoughts on that? I may or may not make the Tuesday meeting. Okay. Because I'm on a train to Brussels, but I, I'll be there in time that I might be able to join, okay. depending on when I get there. How about we'll, we'll still I'll still be here on this Tuesday, but then obviously not the follow. I'll, we'll cancel them the following Tuesday because that. Uh, I, actually, I think with yeah, the I, release, the Tuesday meeting is probably pretty important. Okay, sounds good. That's a good point. Okay, so we'll still plan on at least this meeting going next week, and then we'll just kind of cross the next week. Um, yeah, and also if there's any last minute stuff related to chaos con too. Totally fair. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'll be great. here. But. Okay, great. Thank you. Um I, you know, we had it's eleven forty eight US Central. Um there's a there's a fairly large item on here that I'm going to defer <laughs> in terms of talking about. Um so it's it's really just about it's about data. Um so I think we can hold off on that. So I think we've, we've kind of done quite a bit of stuff today. Um, is there anything else that people want to want to bring up, Georg? Did you solve the ten minute problem for the break? Were you looking at that? I looked at it, and I've updated the. Um, well, let me share my screen again. This is the wrong screen. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So we now have, we start at 9.30 with my welcome and state of chaos keynote. Then we have dips half an hour from 9.50 to 10.20. And we have 20 uh, minutes. Just a, just a nit, but that you got keynote there twice. Oh, yeah. the, key, the keynote keynote for Deb. For Deb. Thank you. Keynote keynote. Thank you. Problem solved. Keynote keynote. Then we have Heat Love Life from Sean and Remy for 20 minutes. Then we have a morning break, only 20 minutes, not half an hour. And then we start at 11 again, 11.20, 11.40 noon. And then 12.20 is when we do the conference photo. Then we have lunch for one hour. And then we have 10 minutes after lunch for everyone to get back into the room at 1.40, 2.20, 2.40, 2.40, 3. We start lightning talks and then 3.30 we start break and then everything else stays the same. So I think now we're good on the timing. Mm -hmm. oh, good, thank you, Georg. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. All right, well, with that, I think we're pretty good with ChaosCon. Release is, is looking to be set. A few small things on there, um, I'll see you at other meetings and some of you all see in Brussels and all that kind of stuff. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.